Hey kids. All right. Um, so I'm going to do double videos today because kind of like for lesson six, lesson seven is very much the same thing. But instead of writing it all out and showing all the multiplication, you guys should kind of know that. I really just want to show you how to do it, how to set it up, and kind of talk through the answers. So we're just going to go through the answer key, and I want you to be working and setting this up as I'm kind of explaining what to do and why. So your job and pro uh, problem set for lesson seven is to draw an area model, then solve using the standard algorithm. So we're connecting this area model to the standard algorithm, and you should have your partial products, again, going straight across, and you should be able to connect them. If you don't set it up with 352 in this order, with the ones, then tens, then hundreds going down, or as you might think, the hundreds, then the tens, then the ones going up, you will not get the partial products in the right order. Why? Because you are always starting in the standard algorithm with the ones place. So I just moved it over here because it was too squished and I wanted to write nice and big. So set up your 481 on top, first factor. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter because of the commutative property as long as whatever number you have on top here is on top here. <clears throat> so in the future, you might, if you create your own area model and you're writing the problem yourself, if you mix these two up, you might panic when you see that your partial products don't actually add up to these. So notice that this is first, it's on top, and it is also the top factor. <clears throat> so we have our um, partial products here in the box for every position. <clears throat> As you can tell, I've been caught talking all day. <coughs> and, um, and then in the standard algorithm, you take your ones, and this is the ones place. Two ones times 481 is 962. And then five tens or 50 times 481 is 24,050. And then 300 times 481 gives you 144,300, which you can find here, the 4 times 3, and the 8 times 3 is 24, and the 300 times 1. So just check your work and make sure that you are carefully calculating within each place value position using the distributive property properly, and then your partial products should connect across. Pause the video if you need more time. Number two. Again, first number on top and on top, first factor. Okay, now lesson seven is a little bit different because we're working with zeros as one of the digits in our second factor. When you have all the digits that have value, then you're going to have a line for every digit that has value. The key here is that when you have a zero, you could have a row of zeros, and we had talked about this in class, and this is what I'm gonna get out and show you now. I mentioned this in class, and I said, hey, if you have zeros, if you have a zero on the bottom, I said, this is what you're gonna end up with. If I have zero tens, Zero times two, okay, well, first of all, hold the ones place with the zero. Zero times two is zero, zero times zero is zero, and a zero, and a zero again. Why would I wanna do that? That's a waste of space. It's a waste of my pencil lead, and my time, and it makes my hand sore. So what you can do is you can just not have this row here. However, what you have to be careful of is that when you do start multiplying in the hundreds place, that you put your partial product lined up under the proper place value position. So if this row of zeros was not here, you would have to have a zero here for the ones, a zero here for the tens, and then you would start with four times two is eight by putting it in the hundreds place, because it's really two times 400 is 800. That's why you have to be careful with the placement of the zeros. So I'm going to recommend that you not have this row because it's a pain and it's a waste. So when you do your work in here, in your book, I will not be putting a row of zeros because I don't want to. 
and I don't have to. So here is your area model, 481 times 302. Notice I have a 3 in the hundreds place and then a 2 in the ones place. So you proceed with your multiplication using the distributive property. Very easy, lots of zeros. Be super careful because I think I made a, a mistake trying to do the answer key before. I was like, oh, not enough zeros or too many zeros or something. Anyway, be sure and write this one. Keep it on top. Your first partial product should end up being right here. Okay, so 2 times 481 is 962. Now here is like I was just showing you. Done with the ones place, hold it with a zero. Okay. Now this is a zero in the tens place. Just hold it right here. Just hold that. That's done. I have now multiplied with all of the zero tens that I had. And I got zero. Big surprise. Move to the hundreds place. Three hundreds times one is three hundred. You are now set and ready to go with your three. I already did the 3 times 1, now 3 times 8 is 24, carry the 2, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. And you have, you don't have to have that row of zeros, and then you can add straight down. Now, can you put in a row of zeros if it makes your little heart happy? Yes, you can. It's not going to be any skin off my nose if you have a big row of zeros here. If it makes you happy and you are like, I just can't quite wrap my head around it yet, then by all means, put in a row of zeros. If you want to put a zero here for zero tens and have a whole row of zeros over here, that is fine with me. I wouldn't do it because it would waste my time, but if you need to do it until you can understand this math, then be my guest. At the bottom, why are there three partial products in 1A and only two partial products in 1B? And this just goes right to what I was talking about, because each of these digits in the second factor has value. Okay, this is the two ones, this is the five tens partial product, and this is the three hundreds partial product. In this one, I'm telling you, you don't have to have a row of zeros, so you just eliminate it. This is the ones, the two ones times 481, and this is the partial product for three hundreds times 481, and that goes here. So you're explaining it here in C, you don't need to have a whole row of zeros. And that's really the bottom line, is you just don't need it. Can you put it if you want to? Sure. But you don't need it. All right, next one. So 8,401 times 305. I now have a zero in my first factor and a zero in my second factor. So you don't have to have a tens column and you don't have to have a tens row. So you should ha eventually have three columns and two rows. And if you set it up this way, and you do your multiplying, then your partial products will line up with the standard algorithm. And you will have your zero here for the ones place, because I'm done with the five, zero here to show that I don't have any tens, just put a zero there, and then bump yourself over to the hundreds place and start multiplying. Three times one is three, three times zero is zero, you need another one there, three times four is 12, carry the one, three times eight is 24, plus one is 25. So lining up carefully, which I didn't really do because these are kind of crooked, but lining up carefully for the addition part, this is looking pretty good, and then you can have your final answer, which you should circle. And please do put in commas every three places. Okay, this is the units period, this is the thousands period, and you have to have a comma every three places to help me read the number when you write it down. If it was just 2562305, I might be thinking, is this 100,000, millions, 10 millions? It's hard to tell if you don't put the comma in. Next one. 7,481, so four digits, times 350, two digits, and you'll have a zero, we can leave that one out. Four columns, but only two rows. Use your distributive property to multiply all the way through. You should know how to do that now. And then here, you have your zero times everything is zero, okay? 
So this first partial product is times 50. Okay, and so when I added it, there's hardly any room. But this is where the 50 goes. There are no ones. So we move right over to the five in the tens place, times 7,481, and that is your partial product. Okay, then your next one, notice how carefully it's lined up. You are done with the ones place, and then we've already used the tens place up here. So your 300 times one should give you 300, and that's how you know I'm in the right place, I'm under the hundreds, and now I've just multiplied 300 times one, and I have my partial product of the partial product, which is 300. Then you continue out multiplying digit by digit, and then you add carefully, okay? The next two use the standard algorithm, so it's pretty straightforward. And these only have a three by two and a four by three. So since it's a three by two, put the larger number on top, always put the larger number on top. If you have the, lar if you have the bigger number on the bottom, it's gonna be a little bit off kilter, plus then you'd have to have three partial rows, three rows of partial product. That would be silly. So you just wanna have two rows. So big number on top, smaller number on the bottom, start multiplying. Line up your digits very carefully. Same thing here, a four digit by a three digit. So I have one, two, three partial products. Line up your partial products very carefully by place value. You should know your multiplication facts. And when you get your final answer, no, I don't put commas in four digits. I almost never do. But yes, I will put it in five or more. Okay, that's just the way I roll. Top of the next is um, more multiplication, but with a couple of zeros. So they both have 207 as the factor. And uh, if you can make this call, place the zero factor on the bottom row. So like, could you have put 207 on the top and then 346 on the bottom? You can, and you'll get the same answer. You'll have different partial products. But why, what difference would it make? Well, the difference it makes is that if you have the zero on the bottom, you only have to have two rows of partial products because this row is not necessary. You don't need that row of zeros. So if you can put the factor that has the zero on the bottom, it will save you time and energy, okay? And in this one, you have to put it on the bottom anyway because you have a four digit by three digit, and that's really all there is to it. This is just straight multiplying. You have a zero. This is the seven times 1,346 partial product. Then we have a zero for the seven, because that's the ones, and we have a zero for the zero. And then we're over here in the hundreds place, 200 times six, okay, 1,200, and then carry the one and you go on. So that's really all there is to it. We have some word problems. A school district purchased 615 new laptops for their mobile labs. Each computer cost $409. What is the total cost for all of the laptops? 615 times 409. Again, I recommend you putting the, the factor with a zero on the bottom so that you only have to have two rows of partial products. Sorry, lights went out. Lights are back on, yay! The power Howdy. didn't go out. Thank goodness. So, um, so make sure that you have your times the ones and then the zero for the ones place and the zero for the tens place and then four times five is 20 and you have another zero there carry the two four times one is four plus two is six and so on so just be really careful with your zeros and if the total is cost make sure you put a dollar sign okay next one a publisher prints 1512 copies of a book in each print run if they print 305 runs, how many books will be printed? These are very straightforward questions. They're just trying to get you to set it up and practice your multiplication. So again, factor with the zero on the bottom. Also four by three, the three would go on the bottom. And there you go, do your multiplication. And you have your total number of books that will be printed. 
please label all your answers carefully. If it's a word problem, it needs, it needs words in your answer. And finally, for number six, as of the 2010 census, ooh, we're having another census this year, 2020. Such a super year. There were 3,669 people living in Marlboro, New York. Brooklyn, New York has 681 times as many people as that. Oh, I remember talking about this in the previous classes. How many more people live in Brooklyn than in Marlboro? So you have to be really careful, like what are you figuring out? You take the Marlboro times 681 to get the Brooklyn. And then you find the difference between to see how many more people live in Brooklyn. So it's a multiply first. You have four by three. So therefore three partial products. Be very careful noticing the zeros. Each has a digit, so you have to have three rows. So one times this should be the same number. Then I hold this place with a zero because now I'm on eight tens. And then I'm over on 600, so I have a zero for the one and I have a zero for the eight. Okay. And uh, then you subtract to find the difference. So anyway, um, I hope you guys understand this. Yes, I'm putting up lesson seven so you can get started on it whenever you feel uh, so inclined because it's just more of the same. So have fun with it. See you soon.